Welcome to lesson number three. This might be my favorite lesson and I think it will be yours too because we're about to go out, we're paddling out, we're getting into the water, we're making this happen. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to find waves with a green face on them. We'll be just practicing, 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 jumping to your feet, wiping out, not freaking out, uh, and just learning a bit of etiquette that we all need to know when we're out in the lineup to make sure that everybody's safe. If you're learning how to surf, the best waves to look for are smaller waves um, and something that breaks out the back and sort of just white waters into the shore for quite a distance. If you really want to progress your surfing, point breaks are the best place to do that. It's really important to pay attention to all of the elements and as a surfer I think that that is what makes us uh, unique individuals because we do pay attention to what the wind's doing, to what the tide's doing. We're, we're always conscious of the natural elements. As surfers we need to know because that's what will tell us where the best waves are going to be and, uh, and how we need to adjust our positioning in the lineup to make sure we're going to be on the best waves. The perfect conditions when you're getting into surfing would be a swell or wave size that's around two to three feet. So waist high, waist to shoulder high is really the perfect size. Um, hopefully you're going to get waves without too much wind and um, yeah, somewhere where there is a, a nice inside break with white water waves and then also waves out the back that have the green face. So then you have all sorts of options where you can practice jumping to your feet in the white water on the inside. And then when you're feeling confident, you can paddle out the back and try and find yourself a wave where you're taking off from the very beginning of that wave and riding on the green face until it closes out. The conditions that I would say is an absolute no for uh, any sort of beginner um, are swells that are really big, swells that have a lot of energy, um, places that are really shallow for, you know, on shallow reef and just stormy conditions. You don't really want to be down the beach when the, the wind is really strong and onshore, blue bottles in the water and there's all kinds of things. You know, you really want to make sure that you're out there in conditions that, that look friendly. That's the ultimate place to start surfing is when the conditions in the ocean look friendly. And I think anybody, even somebody that has no experience with the ocean at all, you can still really tell when the ocean looks angry or when it looks pleasant and inviting. So make those decisions wisely. The etiquette in surfing is whoever has the inside position, which is the surfer that is closest to the white water, closest to the breaking part of the wave, they have right of way uh, over every other surfer in that lineup. So in the perfect world, we would have a nice kind of conveyor belt where once you, you know, if you catch a wave, you go to the end of the line and then you work your way up. And then when you become the person closest to the breaking section of the wave on the inside, then your priority is next. You're able to take whatever wave you want next in that set. A drop-in is when you have priority, you take off on the wave and you are riding it. Somebody down the line will paddle into that wave and they'll jump to their feet and ride the wave in front of you. It's a drop-in. A really important thing to know is when you're paddling out and when you have your surfboard with you, you never put the surfboard in front of you. Or when you're walking out with your surfboard and there's a wave in front of you and the surfboard's in front of you, the wave's gonna hit the surfboard and hit you. So you always want to have your surfboard to your side. That way you can jump over the wave together and you're not getting pushed back by your surfboard. When you're paddling out, you need to be really mindful of other people. Uh, if you're ditching your board, you want to make sure that there's nobody behind you. So if a wave comes and breaks on you, you either want to roll your board over and hold onto it tight so the wave washes over you. I think you'll personally know when you're ready to move up from just riding white water to paddling out the back. I also think it will come down to conditions because there'll be a day when you show up and the swell is, you know, it's the right size, the weather's beautiful um, and everything is really pleasant. And I think that that's the day that you'll know, okay, I've got enough confidence now that I can paddle out the back. I can take off on a wave that has a green face. Riding the green face means you're turning and sort of surfing almost parallel to the shoreline and you're riding along in the clean water. Once you've done that once or twice, you'll never forget how to do it again. And that's really the, the fourth step in progressing in your surfing. Style is completely 
personal expression. There is no right or wrong style. Everybody has a unique style. It's true to themselves. I think that there are so many beautiful surfers to watch and learn from. But yeah, style is purely just an expression of your emotions. And it's funny because a lot of people, they compliment me on my style, but I know that it's just because I have so much joy when I'm surfing. So my style to me is, is just a, an outward emotion of what I'm feeling when I ride that wave. And that's it, it's, it's, a, it's a joy, it's a flow. It's kind of like, I just wanna go fast. One of the biggest things that I learn from people who are just getting into surfing and the biggest question is, how can I not be so frustrated? How can I not be so overwhelmed with the wiping out and the constant uh, you know, beatings that I'm getting from just trying and trying again? And I've always sort of said that that happens to everybody. The best surfers in the world wipe out almost every day. It's just a part of the ride. And it's, it's also fun, you know? I think that it teaches you so much about uh, yourself and who you are and how you deal with a stressful situation. My advice to any young surfer, male or female, that's coming through and pursuing a career as a surfer is to just really be, um, be strong in your intentions and have a clear vision of what you really want to achieve and don't be afraid to go for it. Don't, don't second question yourself. Um, and be open to learning. Just constantly be open to what's out there, what else you can learn. I'm still learning so much myself about surfing, how I can improve. And that's the beauty of surfing. There's always something new to learn. So stay open, um, stay on the hunt, and just yeah, never underestimate yourself. And respect each surfer as they are, male or female. Respect each other and know that when you work together, the sport will grow and flourish as a whole and not for one side or the other, but together. So that's the end of lesson number three. I really hope you got something out of it and you're excited and inspired to get out there and try surfing for the first time. And I think that it'll be one of the greatest gifts that you'll have in your life. So get out there and enjoy.